Hey there, my name is Jeremiah with SeverinWebStudio.com, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can improve the site speed of your Squarespace website using five techniques. There's a bonus one in there also actually, so technically we could call it six, but I'm going five, because one of them kind of is underneath the other ones. Anyways, my name is Jeremiah Severin. I'm with SeverinWebStudio.com, where my job is to help improve the websites of the world one website at a time by helping you master your website redesign. Make sure you're logged into Squarespace, have a cup of coffee, and let's get into it. Before we dive down the rabbit hole too far, I wanna let you know that there is a blog post here that you can follow along with me as I go through all the steps, all those five steps. You can follow along at severinwebstudio.com slash speed dash up dash Squarespace. There's a link in the description. And I'm going to go through everything in that video. There'll be links to everything I mentioned in this blog post. So first things first, before you get all gung-ho on speeding everything up, first, we need to take a baseline measurement of where your site is right now. So there are two tools that I recommend for doing this. One of them is Google's PageSpeed Insights, and the other one is GT Metrics. Now, both of these tools are free, and you can analyze as many URLs as you'd like. I like to get started with the uh, the PageSpeed Insights first, just because you are going to see the the most amount of uh, information as far as uh, what I want to say as far as Google's concerned. You'll also be able to see what your website looks like on mobile and how things are doing there. And I'm also going to go ahead and quickly grab this and then put this into the URL analyzer there. So GT Metrics is nice because it will show you a breakdown of things in the waterfall method, like I mentioned in the post here, and you can see a little screenshot of that here. Make sure that when you are doing these tests that you either screenshot these, get a PDF copy of them, whatever you do, make sure that you have a copy of them so that you know where you're starting at. Otherwise, after a while, you kind of get lost and you wonder if you've made a difference and you know if you're going up or down. Um, but what you want to do is make sure that that's not right. It should be faster than that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, make sure that you get a baseline of where things are and you'll be able to see if you are passing the core web vitals with PageSpeed Insights. PageSpeed Insights gives you the option to do mobile and desktop, but I wouldn't worry about desktop as much, although clearly I need to do some work here. Um, and mobile, you want to make sure you prioritize this because most people are probably visiting your website from mobile. Okay, um, in GT Metrics, if you go to down here to one of these tabs and you click on Waterfall, that is where you'll be able to see where things are coming from. Now, I should probably select a URL that I know is on, um, that's on, what I wanna say. Um, okay, so I'm going to pull up a Squarespace website here, but I know it needs some work. And this is one that I didn't, you know, was not uh, in the package. They did not want SEO optimized, speed optimized. They just needed a nice website for their business and uh, PageSpeed was not a concern at this time anyways. So um, we've got a 65 on mobile, not great. We are passing one of the core web vitals out of three, um, but we show here that on desktop, it's loading really fast. Now, even though it shows that we're loading really fast, we can look at the waterfall to see what all is being loaded. And you can see here that most of these assets are Squarespace. However, there are a couple other ones that we will mention kind of as a prelude. Um, there's Google fonts, 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 images at Squarespace, which is an image that we uploaded, um, and images. So basically images and fonts, a lot of fonts, and then all the JavaScript that Squarespace uses so you can use this to quickly see, is this something that I did? Is it something that Squarespace is doing? You can kind of see at a glance here. Now, once you've got a baseline, you've saved your PDF reports, you can download PDF reports from GT Metrics. You go to web.dev slash, uh, I think it's measure. You can also use this tool to input your URL, run an audit. You can see a score here. This is the same, it's run by the same tool as PageSpeed Insights. It'll just tell you a little bit different data and you'll be able to actually download the Lighthouse PDF, which gives you a ton of data to go off of. So make sure you save all those reports so that you have a baseline to go with. Okay, so now that you've got all that taken care of, now you got your current speed, 
Now, there's one thing that you need to do first and foremost, is make sure that you're using the free SSL that Squarespace provides. If you're not doing this, you're leaving money on the table, plain and simple. It's 100% free, it's easy to, to install with Squarespace. Um, let me see if I can quickly, Severin uh, Play. Um, okay, so if we go here and we go to configure, you go into settings and advanced, and then go to SSL and make sure that you have secure and HSTS secure checked. Once those things are checked, if you don't already have them checked, it may take up to 72 hours for it to propagate. Sometimes I've seen it happen as fast as an hour, a couple hours, so just be prepared that it won't happen immediately. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is to optimize your images. Now, I do have a video that I will link up somewhere around here that is all about optimizing images. Now, I will go over a really brief synopsis, but I would recommend you watch that video to see how to do it fully and also how to optimize them for SEO. But I will say that you should have a max width image of 1500 pixels wide. Now, if you have images that are tall, they, they should also not be any more than 1500 pixels wide. I mean, if they're long, you're gonna be scrolling anyways, but it, you shouldn't have too long of images on your site. Now width, you should not have anything more than 1500 pixels wide unless it's a background image. If it's a background image, then you can have an image that is 2,500 pixels wide, but even then you wanna be careful. You may wanna just opt to do an, a background color. I know it's lame, like trust me, all of my clients' websites, most of them have an image in the background because it tells so much. I understand it's lame. Now, what you wanna do with those images, once you have reduced the size of them to be a max width of 1500 pixels, or 2,500 pixels if it's a background image, go to tinypng.com and upload your images here to be compressed. Now, I do also wanna note that if you are using photos, like photos that you take with a camera, you know, landscape, people, pets, whatever, make sure you're using JPEG, JPG, or JPEG. Make sure those are compressed, sized correctly. Again, watch the video where I go super in depth. I'm, I'm just firing through these things, okay? Make sure that you're using PNG if it's a graphic. So if it's something from the computer that you create on the computer, a logo, a graphic, make sure you use PNG. Again, make sure you compress all of these before you upload them. If you can get away with making them smaller uh, in width wise, you know, maybe you can do 800 pixels wide for an image that doesn't take up the whole screen but you might have to play with this to make sure it doesn't look blurry or pixelated on a, on a, uh, on a screen that's bigger or a retina screen. Um, okay, so WebP is not quite uh, accepted by Squarespace yet. They are working on it, um, but it might, it'll probably be a few months before that thing is rolled out fully. Um, SVGs are not directly supported, but if you watch my video that I will link up, I can sh I'll show you how to actually input a SVG file uh, without uh, you know screwing things up. It does require a little bit of customization, but there's a workaround. SVG files are muy, muy, muy fast. <laughs> I know, it doesn't make any sense. Um, now, here's my bonus tip, pro tip right here. This is uh, you know number uh, two point A, uh, is to upload a custom thumbnail image to your video blocks. So in your videos, you'll see it right here, I got it. Um, you click on your, your video block and then underneath the URL, upload a custom thumbnail. This will make it so that it's not trying to reach out to YouTube every time it loads the page. This is huge, huge. I've seen huge page speed increases by doing this one simple thing, okay? Make sure, please, 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 please upload a custom thumbnail to your videos. Your users will thank you. Google will be stoked. Okay, number three, get rid of third-party JavaScript files. Now, this one is gonna be difficult. I know, it's gonna be hard, but I would recommend that you get rid of all those third-party plugins that do all sorts of fancy mumbo-jumbo things and simplify, simplify, simplify. Only use CSS, try not to use any JavaScript to customize anything. And one of the other heavy hitters uh, for JavaScript is Google Analytics. Now, if you are already using Google Analytics to track your visitors and all the site traffic, 
No problem. Just make sure that you're using the Google Analytics async code. Now I have the snippet in the blog post that I mentioned. It's uh, provided by Google. I even have a link to Google's documentation showing you can use this. Put this in the footer of your of your website in the code injection, uh, advanced code injection, and then footer injection or footer code, something like that. Um, make sure you use this instead. All you need to do is replace your unique, your user ID. Uh, I can't remember what Google Analytics calls that, but the UA code. Just replace that in this Google, in this uh, snippet of code, and that will speed things up dramatically if you're using the old style Google Analytics tag, Google Analytics code. Um, if you're using Google Tag Manager, that slows down things a lot. Um, I, you, I believe you can uh, actually embed those tags directly if you need to track all these things, and then you can still track them through Google Analytics. If that's all over your head, don't worry about it. Just use the Google Analytics async tag, and I'd recommend staying away from any other tracking code, you know, Hotjar, or anything like that that's uh, tracking other user behavior. Um, those things are going to dramatically slow down your site. Uh, Google Facebook Pixel will also slow down your site. There's workarounds on that, but if, you, if you're not running ads and you're not planning to run ads and you hate Facebook like I do, then don't, don't install it. Um, number four is using web safe fonts. Now, this thing is not for everybody. This, this little tip, this little tidbit, it's not for everybody, especially if you're like highly design focused, design oriented, it's gonna be hard for you to come around to using this but using web safe fonts will be huge in decreasing your speed. As you saw earlier in my uh, the waterfall breakdown of northwestautohouse.com, Google fonts was like, what, they had like five or six scripts running to the website. Now that's huge. Now, what is a web safe font? A web safe font is what's pre-installed on your computer and your browser, on everybody's computer and browser. This means that when a user goes to your website, they don't have to download the font along with all the images and text. This is huge. So web safe fonts, while they're not amazingly beautiful and trendy, they're standard. They're fonts that everybody can read and everybody knows. I have a list of them on the website here. Get one of the main one is Arial, is known everywhere. Um, and then, you know, so there is a sans serif and serif mix that you can do. I'd recommend picking one or two max. Don't pick any more than that. Just minimize the amount of processing that's needed on the web browser to load your page. Now, um, I recommend using Arial for your paragraphs and something like Georgia for headings kind of helps stand things out a little bit. Or you can just use Arial and then bold and you know play with the letter spacing. All of these are options in Squarespace. You just have to kind of dig for them in the font settings. If you want a video of me showing you how to do this, please let me know down in the comments below and I'd be happy to do that. All right, next up, number five. This is the final one and it's not for everybody. If you're using Squarespace 7.1, you're done. You've done everything. If you're using Squarespace 7.0, you can enable Ajax loading. Now, Ajax loading will definitely help things out, um, but you need to test if you're using third-party code, third-party JavaScript, any plugins, anything like that. You need to check all your pages and make sure everything is working properly. Enabling Ajax loading is underneath settings and design, or I should say design, site styles, and then you can enable Ajax loading. This is only for Squarespace 7.0. Okay, this will help though, speed things up. Now, that's everything that you can do. Anything else is outside of our hands. You've done everything that you can. If you followed all these steps in this video, you've done everything. Now, if that's not enough for you, you could have two options. That's the only two options I see anyways at this point in time. You have two options. Option number one is you wait for Squarespace to speed things up on their end because everything else is in Squarespace developer land right now. Now they are actively working on this and they, they have been working on this, um, but they've been working on this for about a year and the improvements are not quite to the level that I'd like to see them at. Um, and so that's why I actually chose to move severanwebstudio.com to WordPress. I have a video explaining all the reasons why I did that. Um, now, if you are totally happy with Squarespace, I understand it's an easy to use platform, um, then, then you are just stuck waiting, unfortunately, I'm sorry. I wish it was different, but alas. The other option is that you could do what I did and you can move to WordPress or some other platform. Now, if you would like to watch step-by-step -step and learn how to move a blog, how to move a lot of content from Squarespace to WordPress to a lightning fast WordPress theme that'll load in under a second, 
uh, 350 milliseconds is about how fast I got this thing loading. Uh, then you can check out my course, Graduate Squarespace. If you use the coupon code YouTube, you'll get 20% off and you can get your site rolling. You could probably get this thing done in like four or five days, depending on how big your site is. No tech skills required. I mean, if you can follow along to build a Squarespace site, you can follow along and move over to WordPress. It's not for everybody though. Um, so be sure to check it out. And uh, if you've got any questions about speeding up your Squarespace website, or maybe you've got any additional hacks that I missed here, it's totally possible I ran through this really fast just on my experience. Um, then be sure to let me know in the comments down below if I made you laugh or if I helped improve your website speed by any stretch of the imagination. Be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more videos. Until next time, peace.